Hey everybody, this is Aaron from Aaron's Audio Corner, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Klipsch RP 500M 2, the newest version that came out about a month ago. So stay tuned and we'll talk about what's new and how it compares with the 600M 2 and which one of those two you might like more. Before I continue, let me address a couple things. If you haven't watched any of my videos before, understand that I am objective oriented, which means that I provide data. And the reason I provide data is because of accountability and making sure that we're all starting from the same page. That's important to understand because when you see a reviewer give a review about a product, he may have inherent biases or maybe hear things differently than you do. And the important thing to understand about that is subjective reviews are fun, they're entertaining, but they're not entirely reliable in every case. Now, certainly I'm not saying that you can't trust anybody's subjective opinion, but what I mean to say is subjective opinions are only as useful as the person who is giving them their understanding, how they're able to relay them, but then how you understand the terms that are used. That's why I rely heavily on data I do give my subjective thoughts, but I'll also take the time to correlate that with the data that I also provide you. I also want to give a shout out to Audio Advice. Audio Advice loaned me these speakers at no cost to me for review. And what I ask you to do is support the companies who support not just me, but the community. Now, there's a lot I can say about the 500M2. There's a lot I can say about the 500M as well, but I am going to try to do my best at keeping this review as succinct as possible. Now, subjectively speaking, I'll tell you that I actually like the 500M. And in the past, I've not been a fan of clip speakers, generally speaking. They generally had a sound that just wasn't for me for any number of reasons. But the 600M2 that I reviewed a few weeks ago was kind of a change for that. And it still had a bit of a boosted high frequency response that I don't necessarily care for. The 500M2 also shows a boosted high frequency response but I will tell you without a doubt that the 500M2 is miles better than the 500M V1. What you hear in terms of mid-range presence and clarity is a marked, marked improvement over the 500M1. So if you're on the fence and you're like, should I upgrade? I'll tell you this. If you don't have equalization to shape the M1 to your desires, then the M2 is definitely the way to go, no doubt. If you're on the fence about should you get the 500M2 or the 600M2, my opinion is the 500M2 is a more neutral speaker, whereas the 600M2 is less neutral, but it does have a little bit more bass. So if you want a full range speaker, probably go with the 600M2 and turn them off axis, meaning don't face them directly at you, face them about 30 degrees out into the room, that'll work. However, the 500M2 is more linear off the bat. It also does work well when you face them off axis facing out into the room as opposed to directly on axis. I'm going to show you the data for what I'm talking about shortly. All the details, all the nuance that you probably like and love about Klipsch sound, if you are a Klipsch fan, is still there in my opinion with these speakers. However, it is more linear, so it is closer to a neutral speaker than probably what you've heard before, and I really and truly think that we're all the better for it. Now, Klipsch has the engineering talent and the pedigree to create very neutral speakers. And in the past, they've just not done that. I do find it very interesting, however, that they seem to be trending more toward that neutral type sound in their newer versions. And I'm curious if there's a reason why. If there's some market pushback, maybe, that their customers say, hey, I like this sound, or if they're just trying to do something a little bit different. I do find it curious. If Clips is happening to watch this video, hey, let me know in the comments below what you think. If you're an engineer, reach out to me, let me know. It would be kind of cool to have you on to the channel to discuss some of these things and how you go about doing the design process as I have with some of the other engineers from other companies. One thing I'll say that is perplexing, slightly annoying, actually more than slightly annoying, is how Clips rates their sensitivity. And it's very unorthodox, if you will. Most companies rate their sensitivity based on an anechoic measurement, meaning that it's not in the room, and you take it in free space and you kind of get an average SPL. And that means that most bookshelf speakers of this kind of size are gonna be around the 84 to 87 dB output level. 
Now, Klipsch rates these speakers at about 92 or 93 dB. I don't really recall the exact number, but they base that on a different set of criteria. They also call that in-room SPL. When you put that in terms of anechoic response, you're closer to about 85 dB. Before I start talking about the data, I'm gonna do something a little bit different than I normally do. And if you like this, let me know and, and maybe I'll keep doing this. Since I do have both models on hand, I'm gonna do a comparison. Now I've recorded a sound demo with binaural in-ear microphones, and I'm gonna switch back and forth between the speakers so you can hear what I mean when I say there is definitely more mid-range presence. Because overall, the details and things like that that I hear in the music between these two versions is similar enough. The soundstage width, the depth, are basically the same, but the standout, absolute, no doubt in my mind, difference is the mid-range clarity. And that brings a new level of enjoyment to the updated version of this speaker. I do suggest that you wear headphones for this little demo, but you don't have to. And if you don't care about the demo, then just skip a few seconds ahead to where we talk about the data, because then I'm gonna show you why you heard what you heard. Now, the difference that you heard should have been in detail and presence. What I'm providing here is an estimated in-room response of this speaker. Now, this is taken from a culmination of anechoic measurements performed by my Clipple Nearfield scanner, and then it provides you with an estimation of the response in a room. And what we can see is a clear difference right between one to three kilohertz. It's in blue is the original version, and in red is the updated version. And you can see there's about a 5 dB delta that is filled in from the original version in blue, meaning that the new version in red shows a more linear response through this area. And that is what gives you more resolution, more presence, and more detail in the upper mid range area. Otherwise, these two graphics are pretty much the same. And that's kind of what I heard in my listening sessions. It wasn't night and day in terms of everything else but it was night and day in terms of mid-range detail. In terms of soundstage width, now these aren't quite as wide as I normally like, but if you take the speaker and you tow it out off axis a little bit, facing out into the room, as I said earlier, you will gain some additional width. But when you do that, you lose a little bit of clarity in terms of soundstage imaging precision, but you also gain a little bit more linearity in the top end, meaning that now the top end won't sound quite as bright and it'll sound more smooth and linear. Let me show you what I mean with that. Now in terms of how this compares to the 600 M2, what I'm showing you is a similar graphic to what you just saw. This is the estimated in-room response of the RP500 M2 and the RP600 M2. The 600 is in black, the 500 is in red. And what you can see is the 600 is about two to three dB higher in level and the high frequency response. But overall, I actually think the 500 M2 is a pretty solid buy. And the thing I really do like about the 500 M2 as well as even the 600 M2 is the soundstage imaging placement. I mean, it's just very precise. Now that kind of goes back to what I talked about earlier as far as how you aim the speaker and how much room interaction you have. If the speaker is aimed directly at you, then there's less sidewall influence. But if the speaker is towed out a little bit facing more out into the room, so say the back of your room, then there is more sidewall influence, meaning that there's more reflections from the sidewall that are going to come back to you and they may blur the imaging a little bit. That all comes into play when you talk about how focused or how directive a speaker is. And a speaker like these clips, 
they are a little bit more directive than I personally tend to like. Now, for point of reference, I say that these are about plus or minus 40 to 50 degrees in horizontal dispersion. And you can see that in the red and the orange areas in this graphic. Generally speaking, I prefer a speaker that is a little bit wider in dispersion. And if you don't know what I mean when I say dispersion, I'm just talking about if you're taking a bird's eye view down on top of a speaker and you're looking at how it radiates sound into a room. An omnidirectional speaker would be one that radiates sound evenly all the way around it at all frequencies, 360 degrees. The extreme opposite of that would be a very, very direct speaker that shoots just a beam of sound right at you at zero degrees, dead on axis. But there are no speakers that do both of those completely cleanly, at least not in the home audio market. So what you wind up with are different flavors of that. And that's when preference comes into play. And that's why I always suggest that you take time to look at the full package of data rather than just one or two graphics and try to understand how that relates to your experience. And if you can, compare a speaker that I've tested with something that you may already own, or if you're fortunate enough to even just go out and buy a couple of the speakers that I reviewed and then compare them to the data, that makes you a better shopper in the end. And it helps you understand a little bit more, not just of what I'm talking about, but really what you're hearing in your room. In terms of output distortion, the V2 of this speaker is a little bit more clean through the mid range, but it's a little bit more not clean in the tweeter area. And that looks to be simply just due to crossover placement. Now, I don't consider either of these two deal breakers on either end. So personally, I wouldn't worry about it. Low frequency is where you're really gonna run into issues just because these aren't made to provide serious output levels at very low frequencies. In other words, you're gonna need a subwoofer. 95 dB, four meters for the pair of speakers in my listening room is about the limit before the woofer started to unload. If you use a subwoofer and an appropriate crossover, you won't really have those issues with the woofers unloading. But keep this information in mind if you're trying to listen to these as full range speakers. In that case, you may even wanna consider stepping up to the 600 M2. But honestly, if it's me, I'd probably go with the 500 M2 and I would probably get a good capable subwoofer to handle the low frequencies. Now that's it for this review. I appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed it, please take the time to leave a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to this channel already, that would be great too. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will try to answer them. All of this data is on my website, aaronsaudiocorner.com. Thank you again to Audio Advice and specifically you, Heather, if you're watching this. And thank you to the community for helping this be a fun thing for all of us to learn and enjoy from. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's really it. I, I hope you've learned something about the speaker and I hope you feel like it's more productive than just listening to somebody else talk about what they think they've heard. Because as much as I enjoy that from an entertainment standpoint, I do strongly believe that data is the way that you tie everything back together and you help people from making bad purchase decisions just based on an opinion. And with that said, I am out. I hope you all have a good one. Take care. Peace.